Zach, are you ready? Yeah, right. Great. Uh, we almost did it. We almost made it to the end of the first day. We almost can pat ourselves in the back, but not quite yet. Uh, I'm delighted to introduce our last speaker for the day, uh, Zach Himes from Purdue, who will tell us about secondary stability on order configuration spaces. Thanks, Zach. Cool. Um, yeah, great. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, to speak uh, remotely. Uh, it's great to be attending this conference. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about um, patterns in the homology of uh, unordered configuration spaces of manifolds. Um, and secondary stability is an example uh, of one of these patterns. Um, and basically, the patterns I'm going to talk about can sort of be broken up uh, into two cases. So the first is for um, the homology of configuration spaces of non-compact manifolds. And so in this case, I'm going to tell you about um, two patterns. Um, the first one is a classical pattern called um, homological stability. Um, and this pattern uh, was first discovered for these configuration spaces um, back in the 1970s by McDuff and Siegel. Um, and then after that, I'm going to talk about some more um, recently discovered patterns. Um, so the other pattern for um, configuration spaces of non-compact manifolds uh, is uh, secondary stability. And then the final two patterns that I'm going to tell you about are for the homology of configuration spaces of compact manifolds. So um, the first one uh, for this is um, periodic homological stability. And then the last pattern I'm going to tell you about is something called uh, periodic uh, secondary stability. Um, but before I tell you about these patterns, let me just sort of uh, fix some uh, notation uh, and background. So. Um, so throughout this talk, I was going to assume that M uh, is a connected uh, manifold of dimension N. And I'll denote the unordered configuration space of K points on M by conf K of M. So um, it's the configuration space of K points on M uh, is a quotient of the following space. So I'm going to consider the open uh, subspace of M to the K uh, consisting of all X1 through XK such that um, XI is not equal to XJ uh, for I not equal to J. Um, so the space that I've written on the right-hand side is, is called the ordered configuration space of K points on M. And to get the unordered configuration space on it, uh, on M, I just mod out um, the space on the right by uh, the symmetric group uh, of K on K letters, sigma K, where a permutation um, acts on M to the K by just permuting uh, coordinates. Um, and I'll denote, um, I'll use notation comp of M to denote the unordered configuration space of M. And this is just a disjoint union from K is zero to infinity of configuration space of K points on M. And um, so the goal is to um, study patterns in the homology of these configuration spaces by um, considering the homology uh, of the configuration space um, for I fixed and um, letting K get arbitrarily large. Um, now, if M is a non-compact manifold, um, there's a space level stabilization map technique for, for um, describing patterns in these homology groups. Um, so let me tell you about that um, space level instruction. So um, for this part, I'm now going to assume that uh, uh, M is non-compact. Uh, 
um, then uh, then there exists uh, an embedding which I'll denote by iota of M disjoint union uh, the disk uh, into M and um, let me just draw what this embedding looks like if M is the interior of a manifold with boundaries. So here's M and here's uh, the disk. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so here's your disk. And what IOTA does is you can think of IOTA as sort of moving uh, M away from the boundary. And then after you do that, you sort of stick in the disk. So um, here's your, here's the image of the disk and here's um, the image of M. And so you can sort of think of um, this embedding as sort of sticking the disk in near the boundary. And if M isn't, you know, if you're bored from this talk, I encourage you to sort of think about what the embedding looks like if M isn't the interior of a manifold with boundary, but yeah. So, um, so from this uh, embedding, we get um, an induced map on configuration spaces, which I'll call conf of iota from configurations on M times configurations in the disk into configurations on M. And this just follows from the fact that iota is um, an embedding. So given a collection of, of K points on M, and L points on the disk by applying I think we've lost your audio. to both um um sorry can you hear me uh yes you're back oh cool um i have to share my screen though i think right um Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, did you hear, I don't know where the audio cut out. Did you hear like here, this part, uh, what I was saying here or? We heard K points um, and L points. Like, you were describing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I guess all I was saying was just that you can induce map on configuration spaces because IOTA is an embedding. Um, and yeah. So um, if you pick up a, a point in, in the disk and um, you restrict uh, this induced map on configuration spaces, um, then we get uh, a, a map which I'll call T1 from the configuration space of K points on M to the configuration space of K plus one points on M. Um, so this just, you know, will send, um, you know, this will just send uh, x1 through xk to um, iota of x1 through iota of xk, and then you include the point um, iota of p. Um, and yeah, so. Um, in uh, the 1970s, um, McDuff and Siegel 
uh, showed that, um, so for M uh, non-compact um, and uh, connected and are uh, an arbitrary ring um, that, so they showed that this space level stabilization map uh, induces an isomorphism on homology from the configuration space of K points on M with coefficients in R um, to the homology of the configuration space of K plus one points on M with uh, coefficients in, in R. Um, another way of, of stating this result is, um, oh, and I should say they showed that um, this map uh, is an ISO um, for um, once K is two times uh, the homological degree. Um, so another way of, of stating this result uh, is that they showed that the homology groups of unordered configuration spaces of manifolds um, stabilize, um, so it has homological stability um, for all K sufficiently large. Um, and um, yeah, and so um, what I want to do now is I sort of want to reinterpret this map uh, on homology as um, coming from a map um, defined purely on the chain level because um, this will sort of help um, motivate secondary stability, the other patterns I'm going to talk about. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to, um, so as a form, so I'm assume that M is uh, non-compact, I'm going to fix some embedding um, of uh, M disjoint union uh, the disk into M. And um, now from the induced map on configuration spaces, we get um, a map on chain complexes, which I'll call conf of iota star to um, chains on configurations on M tensored with chains on configurations of the disk. Um, and this will map to um, chains on the configuration space on M. And so all, the, all that's happening here is just that, so given um, a chain in the configuration space on M and a chain in the configuration space on the disk, you can apply the eilenberg zilber map to get a chain um, in the configuration space on M times the configuration space of the disk. And then I'm just applying conf of iota to that to get a chain um, in the configuration space on M. And yeah, so um, if um, E, oh, uh, sorry, I forgot to say one thing. So um, if, um, if we um, fix a homology, if we pick a homology class, um, in the configuration space uh, of the disk, and um, then you pick a representative um, Z not of the homology class and um, restrict um, the map on chain complexes that I just wrote down, conf of iota star. Then we get um, a multiplication by Z map from chains on the configuration space uh, of M to itself. This just sends, um, you know, a chain in the configuration space on M to conf of iota star applied to omega tensored with um, Z naught. And um, so maybe something I should say about this class, this map is that, um, you know, it's, it's clearly depends on, you know, picking some representative of your homology class, but if you pick a different representative, then the two maps will induce the same map on homology 
Um, and that's basically all we care about anyway. So for the rest of the talk, I'm sort of going to just ignore the distinction between a homology class and like a representative of the homology class. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, as I was, um, so if um, E uh, is the homology class of a point, then um, it's not hard to show, it, it's not hard to see that um, the multiplication by uh, EMAP and um, the space level stabilization map T1 um, induce uh, the same map uh, on homology. And um, so this is hopefully, um, this should motivate, I guess, hopefully uh, the following question. Um, does um, multiplication by Z uh, induce um, uh, an isomorphism on homology um, for other homology classes in the configuration space in the disk? And um, it turns out that the answer to this question is no in general. Um, but it does, uh, if one considers relative homology instead. So uh, by relative homology, I just mean homology of configurations of K plus one points on M. Uh, relative configurations of K points on M. Um, and here, I guess I just mean either, you know, the, um, like the cone on spaces from the space level stabilization map, or you can take just the mapping cone on the multiplication by E map. These will give you the same um, homology groups if you take their homology. Um, but yeah, so let me maybe make this answer a little more um, precise. So with the following theorem, so um, for here, M is going to be uh, non-compact uh, and connected. And R is going to be um, the field FP or uh, the integer Z. Um, then, uh, then there exists um, a homology class. Um, in the configuration space um, of the disk, uh, such that the multiplication by um, Z2 map here on these relative homology groups from the relative homology of the configuration space of K plus one points on M relative configurations of K points on M um, so this will map to the homology on configurations of K plus one points plus uh, B points on M relative configurations of uh, K plus B points on M. And I have to shift um, the homological degree by uh, A. And this map on relative homology groups um, is uh, an isomorphism uh, for um, for all case sufficiently large. And um, maybe I should say, so if um, for um, R equal to um, the field of two um, or Z, uh, this homology class uh, Z2 looks like the following thing. So um, you have two points that in uh, the disk, and they do, um, they, they spin around each other along an n minus one sphere. So this is a homology class in degree n minus one in the configuration space of two points. Um, but yeah, so um, maybe two other things, some things I should say about this result is, so this result says that these groups have um, a pattern called secondary homological stability. 
So secondary uh, stability or secondary homological stability was a stability pattern first um, discovered um, by um, Strong Glaciers with Alexander Coopers and Oscar Rana Williams um, in their work on um, mapping class groups. Um, it's a qualitatively different sort of um, pattern from ordinary homological stability because um, for secondary stability, we are shifting um, the homological degree by some um, positive number or some uh, non-zero number. Um, and so I'm like with homological stability where the homological degree is fixed. Um, and maybe something else I should say is that um, in the range where homological stability holds, um, both of these relative homology groups are going to be zero. And so you'll trivially have that this map is an isomorphism, but there is a non-trivial uh, range where both of these um, relative homology groups are non-zero. And so the secondary stability results says you still have some isomorphism in this case. Um, but yeah, so um, with um, the remaining time I've left, I just sort of wanna um, quickly say a few words about what happens for um, configurations of compact manifolds. So um, for in, in, in working with compact manifolds, there's sort of two issues that um, I need to tell you about um, before I can sort of state what the patterns are. Um, and so the, the first issue is that, so um, up till now, you know, because we were working with um, non-compact manifolds, we had an embedding of M disjunion the disk into M but um, for uh, compact manifolds, we don't have such an embedding. Uh, and then the other problem is that we know from uh, explicit uh, calculations that the homology of the configuration space doesn't stabilize in general. Um, and instead of having homological stability, uh, one has uh, the following pattern instead. So it has periodic homological stability. And, and this sort of thing that's right down is due to a um, bunch of people. It's a summary of a bunch of other people's different work. So it's uh, results due to uh, Nagpal, uh, Federico Quintero, with uh, Martin Palmer and uh, Alexander Coopers with uh, Jeremy Miller. So um, these people showed that, um, so your M is uh, compact and connected. Um, and so they showed that the homology uh, of the configuration space of K points on M with coefficients in FP is isomorphic to the homology of the configuration space of K plus P points on M uh, for um, all K sufficiently large. So yeah, so as I was saying before, instead of having homological stability, you're gonna have periodic homological stability because instead of having, you know, configurations of K points being isomorphic, you're gonna have configurations of K plus P points on M being isomorphic. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, you're happy with this result alone because all we sort of wanted to know was like the asymptotic behavior of these um, homology groups. Um, but I would argue that, you know, like a drawback to this sort of statement is that um, they don't, these people don't give you like a, a direct map or like a sort of natural map on, um, you know, chain complexes or spaces from configurations of K points to configuration spaces of K plus P points. And so, you know, another issue is we don't have any way of um, taking relative homology in this case. And so you can't like investigate um, if there's some sort of secondary stability or higher order stability patterns. 
um, in this case. Um, but uh, it turns out that um, one can resolve this um, by using that um, if your homology class um, in the configuration space of the disk satisfies um, a certain homological obstruction, then um, one can define uh, then one can define a new map. So um, a, a new stabilization map, I guess. Um, which I'll call T sub Z comma C. C here just sort of notes like compact, I guess. Um, so this will give you a map from chains on the configuration space uh, of M into itself. Um, and in particular, we um, we get a map uh, from uh, chains on configuration space uh, of k points on M with uh, coefficients in FP to um, chains on the configuration space of k plus p points on M. And so as a result, we, we from this new construction, you can take like, you know, a mapping cone and you can consider sort of if there's secondary stability. And the last result that I'm gonna say uh, says that in fact, we do get some sort of secondary um, stability phenomenon. So um, here uh, M is compact uh, and connected, and um, P is, is odd, um, then uh, there exists um, a homology class, a specific one that I, I could you know, explicitly write down for you um, in degree two P minus two in the configuration space of two P points on the disk Um, and uh, a map uh, you know, another sta stabilization map from uh, relative homology groups. So here I'm going to take uh, relative homology of k plus p points on M relative configurations of k points on M. And so um, I'm going to shift the homological degree by um, 2p minus 2. And I'm going to consider configurations of k plus 3p, 3p points on M relative configurations of k plus 2p points on M. And this map um, is uh, an ISO um, for. Uh, you know, all k sufficiently large. Um, and um, so this theorem says that configuration spaces of compact manifolds um, have a, a different pattern. They have a, a periodic secondary stability pattern rather than just ordinary secondary stability. And the reason why I say it's periodic is because unlike before where, I was consider, where one considers configurations of k plus one points relative configurations of k points, here one has to consider k plus b points instead. Um, and yeah, that's um, all I want to say. Uh, thanks.